Okay, so for this province, says John took out a 20 year loan of 85,000 uh, on July 1st, 2005, at an annual nominal interest rate of 6% compounded monthly. So 6 divided by 12, so 0.5%. And the loan by level, so X at 4.5%. It's monthly, so 12 times 20, 240. Okay, so let's find X. Let's use my calculator. I'm going to do 85,000 as a value. 0.5 at the interest rate, 240 at the number of years. So let's go to the payment. So we're going to find out that the payments are 608 dot 97. Now, then the loan was to be paid by mobile monthly payments at the end of each month's first payment on July 31st. Okay. So first payment would occur on the 31st, okay, of 2005. Now, right after the regular monthly payment on June 30, 2009, so substantial years have passed, um, John refinanced the loan at a new annual dollar rate of 5.4% monthly and the remaining balance will be paid with monthly payments beginning this year the state, the amount of each payment is 500 except for a final child payment. And we want to calculate the date of John's last payment. Okay, so this is a decorated dr balloon drop payment type problem. So we did find the level payments, right? But it says that right after this regular monthly payment occurring at this date, John refinanced the loan. So now, first of all, we want to find out how many payments have occurred uh, between this interval, or basically we want to find out um, what the outstanding balance is of the loan by this date to refinance the whole loan uh, completely. So now, uh, so now um, it says here, so now, this, so in order for us to do that, we know that level payments are 608.97, right? So from this, so since the first payment occurred here, from July to the last month of 2005, six months have passed, right? Okay, and from January 1st to June 6th of 2009, six months have also passed, right? And between year two, years 2005 to 2009, six, seven, eight, three years have passed. So if we put it all together, uh, we estimate that four years have elapsed between these dates. And uh, payments are occurring monthly, right? So four years of payments, so four times 12 is 48, right? And in total, there are supposed to be 240 payments. Right, so we have to do 240 minus 48, which is 192, which is the amount of payments that we need to incorporate to find out the outstanding loan balance at this date. And uh, it also says, oh, and then again, so 0.5%, we're going to find the outstanding balance at this date before he refinances it. So I'm going to take TVM, so 608 dot, dot 97 as the payment, 192 as the number of years, 0.5 as the interest rate, zero as the future value. We're gonna compute the present value, which is gonna be 75,000, Dot two six. So this is represents how much is left of the loan at this date. Now, John wants to refinance the loan at a new annual annual rate of 5.40 monthly and the remaining balance, okay? 
So we they save and they want to refinance it with a new level payment of 500. So we're going to set this outstanding balance of to 500 present value of 5.40 monthly. It's going to be 0.45 percent. And again, the first rule of solving drop payment type problems is that we always want to leave the variable n unknown to find it, right? So we're going to do 75048.26 as the present value, 500 as the payment, 0.45 as the interest rate. Zero as the future value is going to be present value is going to be sixty four thousand one eighty nine. Oh no, we're gonna we we're gonna have to compute the number here. Sorry. So seventy five zero four eight dot twenty six as the present value. Five hundred as the payment. Five as the interest rate. Zero as the future value. We're gonna compute the number of years. We're gonna get two fifty. 0.62 as the number of years, right? Now, we need to find out how much of these payments consist of in relation to how many uh, payments or years have passed to find the date of the last payment, right? Well, we know that this denotes that there will be 250 full payments of 500 and one last drop payment that will compensate for 0.62. So now what we can do now is that, well, it says that beginning July 31st, 2009, that's when it's going to be refinanced, right? So we have a half a year left of 2009, right? So we know that, well, if I were to do 250.62 divided by 12, it would consist of 20 point, um, well, no, first of all, I could, so 250 payments and then 6.62 extra, right? So in order to get rid of 2009, since a half of 2009 already occurred, I'm going to do 250.62 minus 6 payments to simplify to 244.62. Then I'm going to divide 244.62 by 12 to find how many years have passed. So I get... 20.385, right? So from 2009 that we've already finished with, uh, we end up with uh, ending up with January 1st, 2010, right? So from 2010, 20 years have passed, which means that we're all up to year 2030, right? So that means that we can cross out this this and this, right? Now, if 20 years have passed uh, and we're all up to 2030, um, again, we still have one more drop payment occurring that will compensate 4.35. So again, um, the question is, when will this drop payment occur? It will occur in the time interval of two 151, right? So again, well, we did 251 minus 6 to compensate for 2009. Uh, so I guess when we subtract 6 from here, we're going to get 245. Then we're going to divide this by 12. And then we'll find that we have 20.41 payments involved, then we plus 20 to the 2010, we end up getting uh, up to 2030, right? And then once that happens, then we realize that um, it's really hard to find out how many months are left given this decimal. So what I would, so what I, the way I uh, found my answer was um, since these pain, these date problems can be tricky. Since I have 0.41 left, right? I know that six payments were already paid off, so 2009 was covered, right? 
um, because we know that there are 251 payments in total, right? So six was already covered. So we are already down to um, 245. Then 20 years of payments were covered. So 20 times, what is 20 times 12? Um, that would be 240, right? So minus 240. So that means that five uh, payments are left. Right. So if five payments are left. That means that within 2030, five payments need to be made. So that is why uh, in between B and C, we know that May is the fifth year. And that's why C is the answer.